Shalom, friends. Akiva Gersh here. I hope you're doing very well. This week's Torah portion is a very, very special Torah portion. Now, every Torah portion is a special Torah portion. Every paragraph, every sentence, every word of the of the Torah is holy and meaningful and significant, an essential part of the entire Torah. We can't really say that one part is is better than or, or more important than another. But there is something about this week's Torah portion that makes it a bit more significant than any other Torah portion, because this is the Torah portion in which we learn about the giving of, the receiving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. Right? If it wasn't for that moment, we wouldn't have the Torah to begin with, to learn, to talk about, to bring into our lives. So it does have an extra level of significance. And what's really interesting is that this week's Torah portion, right, in which we learn about the giving of the Torah to the nation of Israel, to the children of Israel, is named after somebody who wasn't even part of the nation wasn't part of the children of Israel, wasn't part of the 12 tribes. Yitro in Hebrew or Jethro in English, Moses' father-in-law. How do we understand that? Right? You would think, you know, what's, what, what, what adds to that question even more is there's no Torah portion named after Moses, right? All right. So how can it be that, you know, the most important Torah portion is named after somebody who's not even part of the children of Israel? You would think that this week's Torah portion, if it was going to be named after anybody, would be named after Moses, as he was the one who went up to Mount Sinai and received the Ten Commandments. How do we understand it? We can understand it in this kind of way. We have to understand who is Jethro. Jethro was a very, very unique person. Okay, We learn that Jethro studied and practiced and worshipped all the different kinds of pagan worships that were out there in the world during his time, during his generation. He tried them all. He worshipped all the different gods. He did all the different rites and passages, all the rituals for all the different types of, of pagan polytheistic worship. And then he met Moses, and through Moses, he met the, the children of Israel, and he came to understand the one God. And later on in his years, he was able to, and he did, he opened up his heart to accept the idea of there's only one God. That all of those things that he had tried over all of those years, all over those, all, all, all of those decades, was absolutely wrong. And he accepted this new truth in his life. He accepted the truth that there's one God and that everything comes from this one God. Now that's a major thing to do in one's life, especially in one's older years. But that was Jethro. He was able, he was a he was a truth seeker. He was looking for the truth. And because that was his goal, right? Because that was his 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 mission, his purpose. It didn't matter to him at what age or what he's done or, or how much he's going to have to like throw away, so to speak, in order to accept what he believed was the absolute ultimate truth, because that was what he wanted. And when he came in touch with, with Moses and through Moses with, with, the, with, with the idea of one God and, and eventually the Torah, he said, that's it, I found it. I, after all these years, I finally found what I was looking for. So Jethro is an incredible model for us all, whether we're part of the Jewish people or not, right? To be the kinds of people who are so open to the truth, who are so looking for the truth that we're even willing and able to throw away, so to speak, some of our old ideas that we used to think were part of the truth, were the truth, and put them to the side, keep them in the past, and move on and open ourselves up to new ideas that really are the truth, right? One more part of this week's Torah portion, which I think is very connected to this idea, is that we learn in the oral Jewish tradition that the that the that the Jewish people that they fell asleep uh, the night before. Moses had to wake them up right, in order to receive the Torah, uh, and it's looked at as not such a good thing. Like, how can you go to sleep? How can you wake up late, so to speak, with this incredible moment, this appointment, so to speak, with God? Right? Why were they why were they sleeping at all? You would think before getting the Torah, you'd be so excited you couldn't go to sleep. Or if you did go to sleep, how can you oversleep, so to speak? Why did Moses have to wake up the entire nation? Now, this is a bit of a deeper mystical Jewish idea, but there, there's an idea uh, about sleep. Right? We know during sleep we can dream, right? We can dream anything. We can have, you know, in, in, in a few moments, we can dream, you know, a dream that seems to have lasted for years. We can dream all kinds of things that aren't really possible in this world. Right? Our minds are very open. They're, they're very expanded to all kinds of possibilities. And that is very tied into the Torah and the idea of the Torah being a path of truth. Because, again, like we were saying, like Jethro, who was a person who was able to 
and willing to and did throw away old truths in order to receive the new and ultimate truth, we have to kind of, you know, how do I say it? Go, go to sleep a little bit, right? Before and imagine new realities, you know, expand our mind, so to speak, in ways that we think, we often think is impossible, right? Like we can't um, imagine certain ideas or certain truths being real, but they are. And so the, 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 the Jewish people, the children of Israel going to sleep before the receiving of the Torah was actually a very, very deep spiritual thing that they were going to this state of, I'm open to anything. Whatever God gives me, I'm going to accept because it's from God, right? And if God is truth, then whatever God gives me is truth, right? So that's this idea of, of them going to sleep before and really going into this uh, place of expansiveness and really, really powerful and strong openness to really receive the Torah and everything in it, because they knew that, again, anything coming from God would be absolutely truth and absolutely what they wanted in their lives.